and welcome to Dialysis Nurses Supporting Nurses. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the hepatitis B, B like boy, origin story at the dialysis clinic. And we're gonna talk about how hepatitis B can be spread at the dialysis clinic. Before I get into it, please like and subscribe. And if you have any new dialysis nurses or techs, please share this video with them. When I started as a dialysis nurse in 2016, I thought that these hepatitis B infection prevention practices were so bizarre. I worked as a CNA since 2003, a nurse since 2008, and I've never had to follow these infection prevention practices for hepatitis B patients in the hospital. So let's get started. Number one, let's put these on the right. This is hepatitis B positive patient. They are yellow and they have pluses on them for positive. This is the hepatitis B negative patient. They do not have hepatitis and they are not immune to hepatitis. And this, you can tell by the red. And this is our hepatitis B immune patient because they have red and yellow. So that's how we know they're immune. Let's get started. I'm gonna take you back to the Dallas Clinic in the 1980s maybe the 90s. So here is our caregiver and they are going to take care of this hepatitis B positive patient. They use the same stethoscope, they use the same blood pressure cuff, and they share those things with multiple patients in the clinic. And maybe something happens that blood is going to get on um, the caregiver. This caregiver is contaminated. They have hepatitis B on their hands, maybe their stethoscope, or maybe the shared blood pressure cuff that they're using. And then this person goes up and takes care of hepatitis B negative patient. I'm gonna use the same stethoscope on this patient. I didn't clean it enough. And now I expose this person to hepatitis B. And just like that, it takes off in their body and now they went from hepatitis B negative to hepatitis B positive. So now they're at risk for liver cancer, liver cirrhosis, and that sucks. Oops, stay on there, buddy. So now I came and I touched a patient that is immune to hepatitis. So I guess it's the 1990s. I touched them, I had hepatitis B on me, I transmitted it to this person, and he's like, I got red and yellow. I don't, I don't have to get rid of this yellow. <sighs> See ya. So they, did not develop the hepatitis B infection. So that is one of the reasons why we promote the vaccine at the Dallas Clinic. But one of the takeaways that we're going to take, one of the takeaways we're gonna take from this origin story is that, and this is guidelines by Medicare CMS, is that whenever I take care of somebody with hepatitis B, I cannot touch somebody that is not immune to hepatitis B because I could potentially expose them to the virus. The other thing is this hepatitis B patient needs to have their own machine, their own stethoscope, their own blood pressure cuff, their own everything. I, the other thing I can do is take care of people that are immune to hepatitis because they will, if I mess up or I do something wrong, they will not contract the virus. Once my hepatitis B patient leaves the clinic, CMS says I am no longer putting patients at risk for hepatitis B and then I can take care of people that are susceptible and people that are immune to hepatitis B. And then the last talking point is every month we need to make sure that this person does not contract hepatitis B whether it's at the dialysis clinic or somewhere in the community. Every month we need to make sure that they do not have hepatitis B. And then as far as immunity goes we need to check out these patients immunity yearly. I hope this helped you understand why hepatitis B is such a big deal at the dialysis clinic. And I cannot wait to talk more about hepatitis B, specifically the vaccines and how to educate our patients that this vaccine is important. See you next time.